Hello and welcome to the Criticulus. Today, yes, we are in Age of Mythology Retold and we're doing another guide video. Today's guide is the Atlanteans. We're doing none other than the King of the Titans, Zeus's father himself, Kronos. Now, why he's on the Atlanteans, I'm not quite sure as he has definitely got Greek heritage, but hey, we're going to cover him and we're going to be talking about everything that makes him a decent choice. Now, he is meant to be um, the god of time, I believe so. And it actually works really well with Age of Mythology because he has some time shifting um, magic and powers that we're going to be going on over as well. And don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. But anyway, Kronos. Now, it says his focus is Siege and Myth units, but like I said, he does have that time shift ability. We will be talking about that a little bit later. Now, the first thing we have to really mention is that you actually receive two free Myth units with every age you go up, which can be incredibly strong for helping you kind of defend in those early stages. Not to mention if you actually happen to lose a siege unit or a myth unit, you actually get 20% of their resources back, which I think is bloody awesome. Also, interestingly, buildings construct 25% faster when near uh, manors. Now, manors are your houses. So uh, being strategic as to where and how you place them could make a big difference in how fast you actually set up and later advance in the game too. And the first passive power we have, or the first power we have access to, is deconstruction. You can literally take away an enemy's building so for instance a, a tower or a palace or a barracks even you can't hit a wonder though so if you're thinking you're going to be a bit sneaky and use it to dismantle someone's wonder that's not going to happen interestingly as well um they actually get those resources back for that building now, in Age 1, you get the ability to pick Prometheus, and he has Valor. Quite a decent um, power, actually. This heals any human unit and also promotes them into a hero. You also get access to a Myth unit that, if defeated, actually splits and turns into two um, of those myth units as well meaning they last a little bit longer we also have the ability to buff up our citizens um, now we have got citizens instead of villagers or dwarfs or villagers and theft of fire is actually a really really good um, one to research it gives quite a big buff or over all tier civilians don't forget you can also turn them into hero civilians as well which means that they get that added gather rate too it really is um playing as the Atl atlanteans is rather fast actually now alternatively you could pick leto of course now the first thing you have access to is the spider's layer this is not something that i particularly find very useful i fail to use it many times but the this myth unit is so strong you basically get yourself a little tin man um he is very good myth unit can be very good against buildings is good against infantry and is very very strong if you get that wonder and you can also have the ability to buff them up too you can also buff up your oracles and your oracles are playing as the atlanteans are really worthwhile investing in because they are what's going to be giving you your faith now once you hit age three you do get to pick hyperion now hyperion has an interesting spell it's called chaos and you can essentially cast it as an area of effect over some enemy units and every one of them will just attack bloody everyone we do also have a myth unit which is a ranged myth unit and we get the ability to buff up our heroes as well. Now, as we've mentioned before, the Atlanteans get a lot of heroes. So anything that buffs them up is pretty decent. Now, we could pick Rhea. Um, interesting here, though, because we do have access to Traitor. And you can literally target any unit, any unit on the board and 
make it yours. You also get a beer moth, which is an interesting myth unit. It's very good against buildings, basically a living siege weapon. However, for me, it just doesn't have enough health. So maybe have a little look, see at that. We also have a several buffs that can buff up um, our inventory as well as Rhea's Gift, which can be pretty good as all technologies no longer need Faith to level up. However, that is a little bit of a double-edged sword when it comes to actually unlocking that Titan's Gate and that costing double the amount of Faith needed. Now, for Age 4, we get access to Helios, which is a really, really cool line. First of all, you have Vortex, and you will literally dump every single piece of army that you got through this Vortex wherever you point it. You can devastate the enemy if used right. You also get access to an incredibly powerful myth unit. Attacks so, so fast. Um, seriously really good. Decent damage. Very high health, especially if you get that wandering. And you get access to mirror towers, which is another decent siege tower um, that can help defend an area. Or, of course, help you make an FOB as well. I actually really like Helios. It's one of my favorite go-tos on Age 4. Um, Atlantis, or Atlas even, is, isn't a bad option. Implode can be really good, especially against lower level buildings. Um, not so good against infantry, but it can hurt them as well. It has been nerfed, however. And we're going to show you this in action a little bit later. It has been nerfed quite a lot against actual units, which is a bit of a shame. We also get a top level myth unit here too. Personally, I do prefer the one in Helios instead of this one, but it's still pretty decent. A good tank has a decent amount of health and attack. Probably similar to the Behemoth, to be fair. You can also get Titan Shield, which levels up your destroyers. And we're going to also talk about destroyers a little bit later too, because I used to absolutely love them. Now, first of all, we do get citizens instead of villagers instead of whatever else now citizens do cost quite a bit they have two population instead of one population so you can only ever have 50 of them but like i said they do cost um food as well as wood quite a lot of food as well now the best thing about the villagers or the the citizens is they actually come with their own pack mule so they when they harvest they will harvest straight into that pack mule they don't need a drop off point they don't need to create a car or anything like that and it's actually the citizens that also build everything so they'll be building all of your all of your manors which are your houses and as well as your your barracks and your 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 walls and so on when it comes to actually building them i do find them quite expensive they need a lot of wood a lot of gold so you're going to make sure you need people on pretty much everything with these unfortunately I would also mention that these citizens can be turned into heroes. All human units can be turned into heroes. Now, if you turn a citizen into a hero unit, well, that means you get a lot faster gather rate as well. As you can see, as we're placing these manners, you do get a round circle. Remember, any building you place within that circle is able to be built a little bit faster. Now, you do need an economic guild in order to level up how fast you gather your wood and your gold, etc. Which is a little bit different from other races. Now, the oracles are interesting. They're basically your priests. You can unlock them in order to pick up all the artifacts. They're what gather faith as well. They need to be standing still, I believe, in order to generate faith. You, if you have two of them, overlapping their circles overlapping you'll get a reduced amount of faith as well so you kind of want them spread out also while they're scouting their vision their vision um will decline the more they walk the smaller their vision will get and as you can see we're kind of like experimenting with time shifting right here it's really interesting actually how you can just pick up a building and put it somewhere else especially the towers i think when you're trying to attack whether it be ai or other players it can be really interesting just to you know pop a tower down here or pop a palace down there 
Now, not too long ago, I did mention that you can turn your, your citizens into heroes, but you can turn every human unit into a hero. They do get an increased amount of health. They do get an increased amount of attack. And remember, heroes are good against myth units as well. So as plain as the Atlanteans, myth units are kind of vetoed. One thing we should really mention about the time shifting is that it can be quite slow. The process to actually, you know, pick up a building and put it somewhere else, although it is handy, although it's definitely interesting if you want to move your own um, kind of city as well. It does take a little bit of time. So, you know, uh, forward thinking when it comes to time shifting is really, really important. And alternatively, when it comes to time shifting, we remember we do actually have deconstruct, um, which is an interesting power. You can essentially find any building that you no longer want your enemy to have and just straight up delete it. And considering you actually get this ability very, very early on, um, as in you get it as soon as you start, you're, of course, you get one free go as well, which I quite like. You're able then to really put the enemy on a back foot because they've just spent all that time making a building. You've just deleted it again. They then have to remake that building, which is which is interesting. Playing as the Atlanteans as well is the best race if you want to build defensive. If you want to go heavy on walls and towers, you really can. They have walls that have a mad amount of health, upwards of 3,000 health total. Um, with technologies, it does go higher. And as we're talking about turtling down, we should really talk about the mirror tower. The mirror tower is a tower that we have access to if you choose it, of course. Um, it's got a similar amount of health to a standard um, turret tower. However, the attack is considerably better. Um, these things hit really, really hard. So if you manage to put them in the right places, put some walls around them for a bit of protection, they can take out a lot of units. If you're going to try and play turtling down, um, try and play defensively, the Atlanteans really are the best race to go. However, I wanted to take a second to talk about the destroyers, to so talk about the automations. Now, again, they're a unit that you can choose to build. Um, one of their party tricks is that if they get into battle, if they um, end up dying in battle, at the end of the battle, if anyone's left alive, they will repair and perhaps even refix a fallen um, automation warrior, which is really, really interesting. Now, I always thought the destroyers were the best infantry unit that the Atlanteans have. You also have several upgrades for them, including being able to turn them all into um, heroes as well. However, when you fully upgrade the, uh, the the automations and fully upgrade a a destroyer, you can see a remarkable difference. The automations vastly outdo them both in power and health. So it really is something to consider when playing as the Atlanteans, whether you want to go down the destroyer route or not. For me, if you end up picking the automation route, I cannot blame you. They're a fantastic um, marching army to be working with. Now, Traitor is a power that I didn't ever really use too much at all. Something that I definitely overlooked. However, Traitor can be really, really useful. You can target any myth unit. Um, any infantry unit, any human unit, any myth unit, and turn it completely against them. That does include units that you can summon in as well. So if used correctly, Tracer can be used really, really well. Now it's time to talk about Vortex. Vortex is my favorite god power that you can possibly get. I just think it's amazing just to be able to dump your entire army on your unexpected enemy and it's in an instant and of course once you get your wonder once uh, you get pretty far into the game you have access to vortex pretty freely really um, and then you're just relying on the power of your army you know to get the job done in my opinion it's a fantastic way to just absolutely ambush the enemy 
implode can be also equally a great um a great final um spell it's really good against buildings but it's not very good against infantry units or units in general so keep that in mind great against buildings not so good against the actual army that may be marching towards you but there we have it guys that is everything i've got for you on on chronos and the atlanteans hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and if i missed anything out any power that perhaps you think is much better than the ones that i pointed out let us know down in the comments but until next time i've been a monk who've been critically curious and i'll see you in the next video real soon until then take it easy happy gaming